All right, so here's part two. She starts going in detail a little bit about different things and talks about how her dad was starting to date a girl her age, like the same age as his daughter. This story just keeps getting weirder. Without further ado, let's get on into it. So they find my dad unconscious on the floor. Um, the police officers, some of his teammates rushed him to the hospital. He had to be narcan several times. He had to stay overnight in ICU on a drip. And like I said, no one ever told me my dad was like practically dead. And my wedding was literally the next month. I don't think personally I would have been able to handle my 21 year old cousin dying and then my dad dying right before my wedding. I probably would have called my wedding off to be honest, but no one told me, you know, and he came to my wedding just like came to my wedding, was in the wedding, everything was fine, like thought everything was fine, had my wedding, and then it's not until December where my dad calls me crying. And my dad does not cry, okay? My dad does not cry, like ever. He's very emotionless, very aggressive person. And he tells me that he tried to end his life. And I'm like, when? Because I'm a nurse, I did two years of psychiatric nursing, so I'm like freaking out, I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, May 10th. And I went in my head and I'm like, that's the day of the funeral. That was before my wedding. How did I not know you tried to do this? And uh, come to find out later, my aunt said she saw him at my wedding, like crying in the corner. And she thought that was weird. So that explains that. But anyways, um, I, my first priority is, okay, I need to get you into a mental health treatment center. I need to look over your medical history. So as I start going over the medical history, I see for the last six years, my dad has been seeing doctors and telling them he shouldn't be a police officer anymore. His department sent him, I think, for one fitness for duty test. Um, he always had a positive PTSD screen, which I learned isn't a big deal with cops because most of them come from the military. So all of them screen positive. But I'm just trying to wrap my head around all, all this. And then he tells me that he also had been having an affair which he already told my stepmom about. Uh, and it was a girl, the first affair that he told me about was a girl with my name, the same name as me and the same age as me. So my father tells me that he's been sleeping with a girl the same age and the same name as me. So that's creepy as hell. And then the other affair was his female coworker. And I'm not using names because she might see this video and I don't know if she's still a police officer. <laughs> The, the female coworker was someone he was training and they had been in a serious relationship for two years. They had gotten a secret apartment together. She emailed my stepmom, pretty much telling her the truth that they're together. And based off the email, it seemed a little pushy. It seemed a little bit like she was irritated that my dad had not left my stepmom for her yet. So while I'm trying to process the fact that my dad is literally going psychotic. I looked at the nursing notes. I am also a nurse. And I see that my dad said he feels like a raging lunatic. He's been pacing and walking around at night. He doesn't wear his vest anymore to work. And allegedly, there was a lot of Adderall abuse going on during night shift. So now I know my dad is still a cheater. He's never stopped cheating. He cheated on my mom, cheated on my stepmom. He's now 46 years old. And to make it worse, the police department wants to charge him for the fentanyl because they were using it for an investigation and they said he destroyed evidence. So now he's facing criminal charges.